All right, here we go. Um, I got a question uh, came from one of you, and uh, I thought it was a good one. I thought it was a good question to ask uh, enough to warrant maybe a very, very quick, I don't know how long I'm going to take, but a quick little video that will cover uh, the basic idea. Because the question was this. Decomposition is when one compound splits into uh, two elements in a chemical reaction. I'm just wondering what the compound is reacting with to get this result. And that's really good, right? Because when you think about it, uh, yeah, this is not really making very much sense. How does this thing work? And uh, what I think uh, what's being asked is what exactly is doing the reacting in a chemical reaction? And um, I think even this is asking a bigger question, which is uh, what exactly is a chemical reaction? So I want to start there. I want to start at that one and kind of get a better sense of what that's all about. And then I'm going to move into the details of uh, what how decomposition fits into all that. So what I'm going to step into is something known as collision theory. So collision theory. Uh, I'm going to talk about that in one second. And I'm going to use it by using one of the methods. And I'm not going to pick decomposition. So from your notes, you already know that there's four types of uh, chemical reactions. We've got ourselves synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, and they do all this. And I think a nice one to talk with would be this one, single replacement. Uh, and I think it, it, it helps to kind of look at that one uh, as our main, I, uh, sort of main source to talk about. It's, it's going to help us sort of synthesize our ideas. So first off, uh, let's ask ourselves uh, why, why we know what's going on. And we're going to start all the way with collision theory so here we go first off a uh, question for you question for you to think about if i had uh two elements uh for example i know for example that there is some element uh that is a b this is some material let's make this material right here in it and i got a block of it um and then i have uh say c and i have um let's say some sprinkly bits of sand of it Maybe it's in a powdery form, so I'm going to just put a little, little globules. But they're, but it's sort of a dry sand powder uh, bunch of it. And But then I say, well, okay, that, that's that's actually what I got for um, AB. So this would, so up here, this, this one, the first one is AB. It's a big block. It's like a solid, maybe it looks like a metal or something. Uh, or, or, or I guess not a metal, but rather an alloy. Alloy means I have two metal elements uh, combined. And here I have another element, C. And so I have these two side by side, and I go, okay, um, let me just do this now. I'm going to just, the magic of animation with Photoshop. Uh, here. And then let's say I go, and I stick it on top, and I go, react! And I wait for a while. How quickly do you think this would happen? Um, but I will say, let's do another version of this where I have AB, but now I've, um, let's say I've, I'm, I'm doing something a little different. And in this case, I'm going to have AB that is in, uh, liquid form and C is, uh, also in liquid form. And let's just move these all over here. And so AB is this, the first one, let's actually, let's give it a color. Let's say it's some purple liquid. And then I got, uh. Let me, get, let me get another color, uh, yellow liquid, and then I bring these over here, and I say, okay, uh, what if I took this, and I, oh, once again, let me see if I can do this real fast, transform, and I go, dip, and I, and I pour it into the, into the, actually here, I'll, you know what I'll do, I'll make it really small, there, and I stick the liquid inside, right, right, okay, so, the, and, I, I think normally I wouldn't do that. Let's say I just, oh, I shouldn't draw it like that then. Let's say I poured it in. I'm going to pour it in like that. Yeah, this is better. And uh, let, let's just very quickly pour out the, okay, so I pour the, the liquid in. How fast do you think that would react? And then last um, version, you know what I'm going with now. Let's say I had um, the AB was in a state of uh, a gas and I, and I put it in a, hmm, how would I do this? Let's say I had it in a corked container and uh, I put a balloon of the other amount in and I squeezed the balloon. Let's, uh, right, I squeezed the balloon so that the two gases 
this gas of C went into the one with AB and they mixed. So C was in here, AB was in here, and they mixed together. Now, which one do you think would react the fastest? Which one would actually end up reacting? Uh, or more likely, do you think you'd see these things react? Um, I think most of you would probably say probably the gas. Um, second would probably be liquid. And I think you would see reactions. If these two elements or these two molecules are supposed to react in some sort of single replacement, then I guess you would see it. But I think you would also realize that, yes, not the entire cube uh, would get reacting, only where they were touching. And this kind of gives us a clue about what's going on uh, and, and brings us back to the wonders of collision theory. Because what collision theory is really talking about is that uh, atoms are reacting, or rather, the better thing to say is molecules. Molecules are reacting with each other simply because uh, they are close enough to react to each other. In other words, what we're talking about is that the atoms themselves are touching each other or getting close enough to either share electrons, give off electrons, um, or manipulate each other. In fact, this is such a kind of important thing that when we talk, say, about this reaction, um, we already know that at the molecular level, that if, for example, uh, C was coming along, whoops, couldn't move it. Oh, sorry, I did this wrong. If C, yay, I made it work. Okay, so if C was coming along, let's say C was coming along, and it goes, hi -ya! and it goes, smack, -a. oh, that's, that's not good, let me try this. That doesn't look good. That's this is this is gonna be better. There we go. Bang bang. Okay, so say C is trying to react, but it hits B. But it turns out that what C has to do is react with A. Um, actually, judging from what this looks like, it looks like it has to react with B. Okay, so what will happen is that say C comes along, it goes hiya and hits on A. Nothing happens. In other words, not only um, do the two atoms have to be coming along and we smack into each other and therefore cause the reaction because if c was over here and a b was over here would anything happen no no it would not we physically need the two things to come along and go pa pam and smack in each other not only that actually hit the right part of the molecule so if it hits over here nope a doesn't need you it needs to react with b and and, and replace it and so then b flies off into somewhere you know flies off i don't know that way but what we're talking about is physically reacting physically touching and, and so this is why we call this the collision theory is that it requires collisions it requires these things to hit so if we go back to our idea here and looked at these things well what's the difference between these three situations well it, pretty simple if you think about it what we're talking about is difference in state in other words here i'm dealing with uh i'm dealing with solids whoops what's going on did I do something wrong? Oh, I did something wrong. Hang on. I'm dealing... <laughs> Worst writing ever. Okay, I got solids, I got liquids, and I got gases. And what's the difference between these? What really is the difference between these? Well, we've, we've been talking about this for a little bit of time now. Is that a solid is, is where the molecules are in some sort of, you know fairly strict grid they're 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 not free to move around a lot so let's say i had this structure and in this case it looks like i'm trying to make some sort of ionic uh lattice but say it's um it could be well, no it could be a network solid anyway and then i have the other one coming next to it and i think about this and it's remember we're saying collision theory is what's kind of the basis of uh chemical reactions and so if i have these two and this one kind of goes hiya and smacks at it well it's really only these atoms that are doing any reacting everybody else behind is not involved so you can get a sense of that uh the chemical reaction will be what we would call local it, it would only be where we have uh the atoms actually colliding but it with liquids, well, wait a minute, liquids is actually a little more like where things are a little more free floating. That's moving this way. This is moving that way. That's moving that way. There's a bit of structure because sometimes there's a slight bit of bonding. You might remember me talking about how water is actually slightly attracted to each other because of the, the slight polar, uh, uh, 
what am I trying to say? The 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 polar uh, electrostatic forces. There's there's a bit of uh, attraction between them. So there's a bit of connection. They're kind of connected to others, but there's a lot more free flowing. And then if I'm talking about gases, well, really, um, then I'm talking about these individual atoms just zipping around and not even caring what everybody else is doing. So if collision theory is the basis of chemical reactions, then you can get a sense that with G, in the case of gases, I'm going to get way more things reacting each other very quickly because once I mix two gases together, then it's just all bets are off because this one could be from uh, compound AB. This one could be for C. This one could be compound AB. This could be compound. And so the chances of them hitting each other and therefore reacting is just much more likely. So uh, the state of the elements involved is going to change it because what we're talking about is physical touching. Okay, so how does that relate then to uh temperature because what's happening there is that we're talking about can we change the reaction if we increase or decrease the temperature well what what does temperature mean what does it mean because we say well you're 20 degrees celsius so what so what exactly is 20 degrees celsius what what does this mean it, it's often not talked about um, most people don't know. This is related to a, now in this case I'm going to say a gas, but a substances, 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 kinetic energy. Ah, uh, energy's come back up again. It's, it's related to the kinetic energy. And kinetic energy, what do I mean by that? motion and so if I go back to these reactions what if I heated them up so what does that mean well that would mean that in the liquids all the little tiny uh, molecules and all the little atoms in it would be moving faster and if things are moving faster I'm gonna get things reacting a lot more because there's more chances of things hitting each other and that's essentially what the deal is that's why whenever we're doing some kind of chemical reaction we're going to heat it up to get it going faster because all we're talking about is making those things collide with each other. Now, this still doesn't answer the question uh, that was originally posed. What was the original question? It was basically saying, uh, no, nope. it was, what's the deal with decomposition? Let's go back to decomposition. So decomposition involves two, uh, sorry, no, it doesn't, it involves one, <laughs> one molecule that breaks up into two things. So the thing is, is that with chemical reactions, we haven't talked about the extra thing involved. Now, you know that you need to have things touching each other and decomposition seems to fly in the face of this because great, but there's nothing else to hit it. It doesn't seem to work in the same way that all the other ones seem to make sense. All the other ones, you get it. You got two. I'm going to mix them together. They're going to hit each other and therefore react and then something's going to happen. But what is up with the composition so let's talk about that and i'm going to answer it by looking at synthesis yes i'm never going to get to my point okay so here's the deal okay so now i got it now i got it so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to uh ooh, i'm not going to do that i'm not going to do i'm going to erase this arrow so i want to talk about that arrow that arrow is actually something kind of important in chemical reactions. What it's saying is the difference between what's known as a spontaneous or non-spontaneous reaction. So spontaneous or, or non-spontaneous reaction. Because when I talk about this, let's say in this, and we're talking about collision theory, in, in the case of synthesis, I'm taking one uh, element and another element they smack into each other remember collision theory and then they automatically become uh, a molecule where they're combined and this is a spontaneous usually a spontaneous reaction uh, it might not be spontaneous but usually what happens is that uh, in this reaction uh, not only are they created but there's also the production of energy the result of them doing this uh, they create energy. So they, 
this reaction doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't need any any energy to happen and those we call spontaneous we call those spontaneous in other words they actually they they usually I should they usually create energy they usually create energy so what happens is that as long as you put these two close together they smack into each other boom I get this uh, creation but it turns out that most of the time uh, decomposition which if I'm looking at this would be in this direction is not spontaneous it doesn't automatically do it if I have say salt um, thankfully uh, my salt uh, cubes don't immediately just spontaneously break into sodium and chloride all the time uh, pretty much I get my salt and it stays salt and it's actually pretty hard to break down in fact um, it's really tough to break those bonds um, in other words, if I'm going in the direction of non-spontaneous and most decomposition is, not all of it, not all of it, some of it is so unstable it doesn't need any energy, but non-spontaneous will need energy. So when we're talking about what is a decomposition or reacting with, it's it's basically its bonds are being broken, but what is the extra thing? The extra thing is the energy. So uh, I can actually show you this. I'll show you this right now. Okay, so take a look at this. What what this person has done? This is a video of a person taking two tacks. They've they've put the tacks uh, through the bottom of the uh, plastic container. And they've so that the they touch the sides the two parts of the battery, and what's in here uh, is some water. This is just water, by the way. This is just water. And I think immediately when you look at the video, you um, they should they should zoom in on this. Zoom in. Oh, very good. You'll notice that there is definitely a chemical reaction happening. Look at all the bubbles. Look at all the bubbles coming off of the little ends of the tacks. So what is that? Well, we know that all we got in there is water. So what is being produced? Gas. What possibly could it be? That has to be oxygen and hydrogen being produced. So what we have is a decomposition. You can see all the pieces there. Yeah, yeah. See, it's starting to fill up with the gas on either side. Uh, this is a great little experiment. If you guys ever feel like doing this, uh, I'd be happy to do it with you in the lab. It's a pretty simple experiment. So what's going on? We have decomposition and we know water does not spontaneously break into hydrogen and oxygen otherwise while we'd be drinking water then suddenly our mouths would fill in with a pile of hydrogen and oxygen it doesn't happen so what's being done here is the addition of uh, electricity electrical energy is being added to the molecule and as a result let me see is there anywhere else oh they're actually doing it in some blue liquid same thing going on here this is the exact same thing but they're adding energy. So in other words, to answer the question that was posed, uh, there is nothing else uh, doing the reacting, but there is additional energy required. Uh, and in this case, not heat, but uh, uh, what's known as uh, electric, uh, electric, ele 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 electrical energy, <laughs> sorry. Um, and this is, if you want to look this stuff up, this is also known as water electrolysis. And that's where you just send some electricity through and you can separate uh, the molecule into its separate parts. You can actually create a decomposition reaction. Anyway, I hope that helps out a little bit. Uh, if you got, oop, I'm done the video. If you got more questions, uh, let me know. Okay, bye.